This is May's chapter 12, part 4. She could care less. She wasn't them, and climbed into opiates like a comfortable chair she could lean back in and forget what she saw in the fields, in her blood, in the ways. Her loyalty to her human family was true. She spoke to no one and tried to evade the truth. There had been no marks left on the bodies. It was night and she could not see well. The men could have died from natural causes, but all at once? No, no, it was no use. Her uncles, they did it. And they were not her so-called uncles at all. She was changing all her beliefs. She would keep to herself even more, always missing from the group of women who convened afternoons to cry and laugh and gossip and scold, fanning one another in the extreme heat, eating tamales. They gave up on her, for she was absent even when she was present. She was not idle in her mind, contrary to popular belief. She was all day, every day, configuring a way out of Texas. And she made good on her fantasy to steal the keys and drive a Cadillac Escalade off a showroom floor throwing the puppy in gear and blasting on out of the borderlands, heading north in a blanket of dust, until she found an old two-lane highway, the kind that never stops until it hits Canada. But for some reason that part of her plan changed, and she went west to California, switching plates with a random car she found, then north to Oakland, abiding by the voices. Anywhere to escape the lot of them, the glowing eyes of her true family, like bluish embers in the skull. That fateful night they descended upon her from the canopy and devoured her sense of herself. She could not push the pain away, but the pills could, and she evaded her dark and fiery inheritance for as long as she could, but now it was inescapable having surfaced again in its own time and place and way. She just didn't expect it right now, right here, with her new and wonderful friends at the base of the Paramount Theater in Oakland. What a miserable come down.